the, the national circles of the club. Um, yesterday they were at Manchia with the uh, with the management team. We want to find out what really transpired at that meeting. It's all got to do with the Charger Limited um, contract signed by the supporters. And so we'll be speaking to the leadership of the supporters. And Akwabe Dankwa is the chairman for the Greater Accra Regional Circles. We'll be speaking to him. We've got something also from Galka. Don't forget that tomorrow Kotoko are playing against Accra. So focus on the international front. If you are a Man Manchester United fan, don't jubilate um, yet because um, there is a little twist to the Alexis Sanchez transfer. If it's going to happen, something also should happen. So we've got this all for you here on the show this afternoon. All right, so we'll be going on the lines very soon to speak to Nana Kwame Dankwa. He is the chairman of the Greater Accra Regional Circles. Don't forget that Menshia invited the supporters sometime last week, the supporters' leadership, for a discussion on um, the wranglings between the uh, supporters' front and the management. And then somewhere along the line last week as well, the management were invited. Yesterday, both parties were invited to Menshia by the Bantu Mahini and number four, and um, as some other chiefs as well to um, dialogue uh, for um, uh, a settlement on the issue. We'll go on the lines now and speak to Nana Kwame. Dankwa. He is the chairman of the Greater Accra Regional Circles. We hear he was there uh, as the leadership front of the circles together with Chairman K5, Kwekwan Ponsa, as well as Chair, um, Mr. Obain Setra. So, Nana uh, Kwame, if you can hear me, good afternoon. Thank you very much for your time here. First of all, can you confirm to us whether indeed you were at Mensha yesterday and what uh, can you tell us about the outcome of the meeting? Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. My greetings to the supporters and the gentlemen. Yes, very heavy is true. We had a call from uh, Ankobi Ahene to meet with the chiefs of uh, Malaysia yesterday. And uh, myself, K5, and Obiente Che, represented the circles. And uh, from the management side, Dr. K and uh, Lea Boafo also represented management. And uh, the three chiefs, Bant Mahene, Tabo Ahene, and Ankobi Ahene, were the chiefs that we met as it happened uh, the previous week. I can say the meeting was very fruitful, ended very successfully. At the end of the day, we were able to smoke this by between the supporters leadership and the management. But after that, we were told to uh, hold on to other issues. Nanam has taken the matter up and uh, the, uh, the appropriate time um, issue a statement to that effect. So what I can tell our supporters is that now management and supporters leadership, we are back to our normal track. Everything is now on course. We need to give them the maximum support. The Israel Majority has given the thing to Eternal Dr. Kwamite. So Dr. Kwamite needs our support and support to help him run Kotoko peacefully. Mm. So um, can't you share with us um, anything else, some some details at least for us to know whether indeed they've sanctioned the contract that you supporters have signed uh, with Charger, whether the deal is going to continue or not? Well, the Nanonim has taken over the matter and uh, we are on it. So after everything, we wish you a statement to that effect. But the bottom line is that uh, you need to work hand in hand. Dr. K is in charge of the team. We are the supporters of the team. We need to complement his efforts. We need to give him the support. What was the main issue for Nanana was that the misunderstanding, that field between management and that of the supporters leadership. So they were able to stamp the authority on it. They resolved the matter. And later we were, you know, hug each other and shake our hands. Then we took uh, the advice in good faith from the Nanano. So I think that for us, it was a privilege to meet with the great kings. And for me, the advice given and the direction uh, was fantastic. But I don't have the permission to go into the matter, the matter in detail. But Nanano will issue a statement on that at the appropriate time. And I believe by close of today or this week, the statement will definitely come out. Um, very expected. We'll be expecting that statement. But tell me, Nana Kwame, um, sincerely, uh, from your side as leadership of the supporters, were you sincerely satisfied with the outcome of the meeting yesterday? Hello? Hello? Let's see whether we can get Nana Kwame back on the line. We're trying to get him uh, speak to us here. Uh, we'll try and see whether we'll get him. I was asking whether indeed you were satisfied with the outcome of the meeting yesterday. All right, let's go back and go and try it if you can hear me. And I was asking whether indeed you guys were sincerely satisfied with the outcome of the meeting yesterday. Whichever way the matter will go, the will not be winners, management will not be winners, but the Santiman and Kotoko 
to be the winner. So for me, we are all for Kotoko and Kotoko needs us. And like the, the chief said, Kotoko is the heart of our great king. And any time there is this misunderstanding between or in the team, the king is not happy. And for that matter, they need to make sure there's peace in the team. And to us, we are law abiding supporting a group. We cannot go contrary to the directives of Manami. And we respect Manisha, we respect our chiefs, we respect management, we respect Dr. Kwamitia and his management. So we do nothing to bring their effort or the progress of the team down. We need to complement his effort. So whichever way or whatever the Manami comes out with, the leadership of the National Service Council, the supporters, we go by it. We believe that what is good for Kotoko is what Manami is going to say. And whatever they say, we are ready for it. And we will, we will go by that. All right, finally, for want of time, before you take leave of us, tell me, tomorrow there's a big game between Kotoko and Hearts of Folk. Um, as a leadership of the supporters, how are you guys going to mobilize the fans to make sure that they come to the stadium in their numbers to cheer the team to victory? Once again, we seem to be having some problems here. I think we're all really uh, As supporters, we have our core duty. Our core duty or mandate is to make sure at all times we give the maximum support to the team. What that brought up was the administrative matter. And for me, the leadership and the are finding solutions to the problem. So I don't expect our supporters down there to allow themselves or to allow this issue to eat into them. Let us come together as one people. Kotoko is what we have. We are playing House of Folk tomorrow. And you know, between Kotoko and House of Folk, even if we are, you know, exchanging words or fighting for the common pencil, it matters. So let us come together as one group, one people, I mean, with a common destiny. Our core value is, I mean, to make sure we support our team at all times. So I expect our supporters to be at the Mabaya Sports Stadium. In their numbers, we should demonstrate to the outside world that indeed there was a problem, but then our chiefs, our elders, uh, the way the authority is has, uh, uh, I mean, stepped in and the issue is resolved. So we should demonstrate tomorrow to the people, to the outside world, that yes, indeed, that is what we have. And we are coming to give management and receive the full support. So come tomorrow, we need to come to Baba House for the doing our numbers to make sure the dominance of the House of the last season or last year to continue from this year. Alright, so Nana Kwame Dankwa, thank you very much for speaking to us. He's the chairman of the Greater Accra Regional Circles Association, uh, Regional Circles uh, of Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Alright, now, tomorrow Kotoko are playing House of Folk in the first semi-final of the Galka G8 competition. Then on Thursday at Cape Coast, Mediama Sporting Club will be playing against Dreams FC. Meanwhile, sports person for Galka, sometime on Toy Champion House, Total Love Sports, all is set for the game to come off tomorrow at the Babayara Stadium. Yes, um, we we had anticipated that any fixture at all could come up. So, um, immediately after knowing those who are in the semi-final, uh, we, are, we are in touch with the National Sports Authority. Uh, we are organizing a stakeholders meeting at 4 p.m. tomorrow, on tomorrow Tuesday. We hope that the House of Folk Coach can make it to our pre-match press conference, which we want to um, also have tomorrow probably after the stakeholders meeting. So um, everything about the game has been done. Once we have the stakeholders meeting, the security will brief you about what they intend doing. So what is more important in this category, AMA, is to have a very good stakeholders meeting and get all that you need to do. All right, so that was Sam Tamo Otoe Champon there for you. Now, staying with the Girl College 8 competition, chairman of newly promoted Premier League side, Levin Wonders, that's, um, Mr. Techai has commended the organizers of the competition for their transparency with the participating clubs. Now, according to the outspoken Techai, for the first time in the history of the local game, participating clubs of a competition were given contracts or sponsorship to study, something he says has never happened. Thunder, as he's affectionately called, says the GFA should take you from the Girl example and make their dealings transparent. You need to commend Kuju Fiumi and his management. For the first time in the history of Ghana football, where the sponsorship and all the stakeholders were called to the round table. And copies were given to all the clubs mm -hmm. to go and study and then to get their inputs. What is entailed in the whole package was known to all. And that is why we've all left our viewers. Nothing, nothing is hidden from me. Nothing is hidden. And that's why we are all here. Making sure Gaka will go up. What uh, the others should what? At others like? Others like GFA, the PLB, and whatever. She learned from Gaka. 
The GFA is not being transparent in it. At all. Starting from gross sponsorship, they went for a certain company called Messi. And that is why Robert supporter Abraham Boache is still at court. What happened to First Capital Plan? So let's comment uh, Gaka. Yeah, you should be transparent because you are the stakeholders. Huh? So how can you be signing contract without recourse to? But when it happens like that, what, what does the club say, tell the GFE? They will tell you it's a classified document. <laughs> <not complete. laughs> All right, now Tender is also calling on the country's two leading clubs, Kotoko and House of Folk, to be more aggressive with their dealings on transparency issues with the FA for the smaller clubs to follow suit. The most glamorous clubs, Kotoko and Haas. Those days, if they see is a FA catching school, they will be seen now. They are now not assertive. So gradually, the lesser teams are what? Climbing up. And if they, if they don't take care, they'll go into the oblivion. Huh? They go into the door drops. The name Kotoko and Haas will be mentioned and nobody prepared to listen. So they must be a little bit assertive so that the, the lesser class will, work, will also follow them. Okay. Yes, we are taking their positions gradually. All right, now news just coming in indicates that Kotoko and Biana, the super class, will be coming up out of Boise on the 28th of January. Um, you know, Kotoko and the FA Cup champions will play against the league champions in the Super Cup before the start of the new season. So that match has been slated for the Boise and Clay Sports Stadium on January 28th. Now, meanwhile, Kotoko have signed former Biana stars defender Daniel Dakwa on a three year deal. Dakwa, who left the Fireboys at the end of the season following the expiration of his contract, was reported to be inching closer to a move to South African outfit, Marisburg United, but the deal fell through and he has signed for Kumasi Asante Kotoko and we also hear that distinguished Ghanaian referee William Agbovi has called time on his career after two decades uh, after over two decades in the profession he says that um, he's been in, he's been in the services 1992 and has spent 26 years in the job and he says that he thinks that he's done enough and has to move on now let's do some international stories and defending champion Roger Federer outclassed former Britain Al Jazz Bedeni, 6386463 to read this uh, Australian Open second round in Melbourne. The Swiss produced a majestic display to show why his favorite to win his sixth Australian Open and the 20th Grand Slam title at the age of 36. Now to footballer Ryan, Ryan Giggs' father says he's ashamed of his son, who he says stabbed brother Rodri in the back after having an affair with his wife Natasha and not apologizing. Speaking after Giggs was appointed as world's manager on a four-year deal, Danny Wilson told the son, and I quote, I shall be the proudest dad in the world, as happy as a lark but what, by what he's achieved, but I am ashamed of him. I can't even bring myself to use his name. I refer to him as the ex-footballer. As the eldest, he should have been watching his brother's back, not stabbing him in it. He cheated in the worst possible way, and it's not being a man enough to apologize to his brother. Meanwhile, Ryan Giggs has assured the Welsh nation that he will be a good manager, although it's been said that being a good player does not necessarily make you a good manager. So many times it's been said that, you know, uh, if you've had a good career as a player, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be a good manager, but um, I think that's down to the individual. I'll do exactly what I did when I was a player, um, professional, give it my all. Oh, I, I played 64 times for, for my country, 65 if you include the, the game against the Basque, which I think I scored the winner in that game. When I, when I played for my country, I give it my all. And I loved playing for my country and now it's probably the proudest moment of my life to, to lead uh, the Welsh nation into the, the next um, two to four years. Obviously, with the Euros and then the World Cup. We haven't been in a World Cup since 1958. I want to get this group of players there, and I want to be part of that, obviously. All right, Ryan Giggs, the man who slept with his brother's wife. <laughs> Dangerous. All right, now, finally, to some other, uh, to some other international stories. Then. Alexis Sanchez's fate is in the hands of Manchester United midfielder Henrik Mkhitaryan, according to his agent, Mino Raiola. Arsenal are, keen to, uh, are not keen to do a deal with United for 35 million rated uh, Sanchez unless they get the Armenian in return. And according to Mkhitaryan's agent, Raiola, he hasn't yet made up his mind. United are keen to proceed, but it is now down to Mkhitaryan to decide what happens next. Raiola told the Times Manchester is not going to sign, United is not going to sign Sanchez unless Mickey agrees a deal to join Arsenal. And finally, Arsenal have formally offered Jack Walsh a new contract which includes a hefty pay cut. Wow. Sportsmail exclusively revealed on December 27 that a resurgent midfielder will be offered a new deal on significantly reduced terms. Walsh's current basic wage is in excess of £90,000 a week. 
plus lucrative bonuses that can take his earnings to £120,000 a week. But Arsenal have offered Wilshire a basic wage of £80,000 per week. The club has also offered Wilshire a lucrative bonus package to help boost his deal. Boost his deal. Wilshire is desperate to stay at, to stay at Arsenal, but the new offer could prove a stumbling block. Um, a stumbling block in the midfielder committing his future to the Gunners. The news did not go down well with celebrity Arsenal fan Pierce Morgan, who tweeted, What? In that case, Jack Wilshire should, should leave to Arsenal. It's now an absolute shambles of a club run by utter clowns. And I do agree with Pierce Morgan. How can you cut down the wage of a player that you think is a future for your club? Well, later on Drive Talk, my fiancé says, until his ex-lover gets married, he's not moving on with me because he says she has been good to him. Should I wait for him or leave him behind? Masa, uh, look, lady, move on because what if she he ends up not getting married again? Eventually not getting married for the rest of his life. Then you'll be waiting and staying and you'll be growing and you'll not have a child. Hey, Moses, so move on. Move on in life. Yeah. Simple. Oh, of course, you have to move on. Wait for him. Yeah, but I, I like the, the, the gig story you did. Oh, Charlie, in brother and wife. Right? Uh -huh. So then they asked, the oh, woman, he forced the woman or... No, 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 no. Oh, they were in a relationship for over four or five years. It's one and it's one Obama and Abema. The two of them are wicked, man. No, we but... Don't, we don't do that. One and it's one and it's one and it's one One mother, one father. The two of them are wicked. Obama and you are Yes, but for this, uh, for the drive talk one... <laughs> <laughs> Madam, move on. Get married. Probably he can end up being a Roman father. How why why any papa? And I'm saying that. What if the man ends up not marrying in his life? You also stay like that because of papa. And so we be near your papa and know how. <laughs> you papa, see? papa. You see? Me, me, my papa, no, 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 no. I have so, to move on. You move on. Of course, man. Then you don't love it. Love 99.5 FM. Back up your files in the office. Turn off the computer.